Hello, and thanks for watching this video on um, one way to do science fair if you're a Challenge A director. And we just finished up science fair, so I thought I would mention these couple of notes in case it's helpful to somebody else um, since it's fresh in my mind. <laughs> so here we go. So the first thing is uh, preparation for science fair. So, I mean, really, you're working on stuff over the summer before, right? But in September, October, that's probably the time to start communicating um, with your community people. So with the parents, um, there is a science notebook, a really great science notebook that is in the Challenge A uh, Facebook group for directors. It might also be... Um, NCC Connected, I'm not sure, um, but it is a really robust science fair packet that has a bunch of information and a lot more detail because I don't feel like the Challenge A guide necessarily tells you a lot of detail on what you need to do for all the different steps, and the kids generally need more direction than that. And so that is uh, the science notebook that I gave to my parents like early October. And then also in October, I determined, well, actually the summer before I determined the date and the location, because we decided that we wanted it to be a community day when everybody else could kind of participate and get to experience it. And we found judges also at that time, or I was pretty sure I had my judges. And then I had a parent informational meeting that just went through a little bit more on what to expect for science fair and kind of introduced them to the packet that I was providing. This is an example of the schedule page from that packet that I mentioned. And so this is really helpful because it gives a more detailed list about what needs to be done at each of those steps and how that corresponds to the week that we're in in class and the dates. And so I updated this to our dates. And so during the research strand on community days, you're going through and you're covering the topics that they talk about in the guide and doing the examples and all that kind of stuff. I would remind the kids where they should be with their experiment and writing, at least in their lab journals, and then putting together their research plan that they had and typing that up. And then I would communicate with the parents when I do my weekly email as to what they should be working on and if they need to bring anything to class, what they would need to bring to class. And then um, as we approached winter break, I made sure to remind the kids that they needed to be running their experiment at least two times over Christmas break because there really wasn't going to be time when we came back after break and started up with class again. Um, over Christmas break, um, okay, let me show you a quick video on all the supplies I used so that when we come back here, you can see what this supplies list is about. I'll go to that quick video real here real quick here. Hey, this quick video is just going to show you some of the things we got together for science fair to see if it's useful stuff that you would want to have as well. So I believe it was on CC Connected. They have these little passport guys and they were actually smaller and I just made them fit four to a sheet so I could print them out because we have like almost 50 foundation kiddos in our community and we cut these all out. And so I have seven students. You can see there's seven open boxes and if the foundation kids come through science fair and they interact with my students, uh, my challenge A students, then the student, each of them have one of these sheets with different colored stars and they'll put them on the little passport book for the kiddos. And then if the foundation kid fills all their passport with all seven of the stars from the different kids, then they come to me to earn a prize and their prize are these fun science themed stickers and so they get one of the stickers. And then the um, all the completed ones go into a drawing. And the winner of the drawing gets this science kit. And I bought this off of Amazon for like $14. So it was a great deal. It has a bunch of supplies in here. So I think they'll be excited about that. And then I also picked up a um, little prize, or not a prize, a gift for my science fair judges. So I have a thank you card on here. These little water bottles were less than $10 at Walmart. And then when you open up on the inside, I have some tissue paper in there and a bunch of little chocolates because the Valentine's Day candy is out. And so I was able to stuff that with chocolates. In terms, in terms of the awards, um, we have a couple different things. So I have these science fair survivor um, ones that I put together this I made on Canva and I'll link down below for just like a blank one that you could use if you wanted to print it out. I'll also give you the Canva link if you want to edit it but I think you might have to have a pro membership on Canva 
in order to make the edit. So I'm not sure of that. So that's why I'll put the PDF as well. And then you can see that shiny embossed sticker down here. I bought these off of Amazon and I just thought it gave it like a nice seal and a much more formal presentation. So I printed these on cardstocks and I have one of these for each of my students in the class. And then um, I have something for the top three based on the judges awards, but for the other four, because I have seven kids, I still want to make sure to kind of call them out and have something that is just specifically to them to let them know I've seen their um, science fair presentation and I really want to reward them for, for doing something great and doing something hard. So um, one of the moms on the Challenge A directors group on Facebook put this list of possible awards together and these are in color. So I just took these and printed them out in color on sticker paper and so these are sticky and for the four kids that are not going to get the top three awards I still want to find a way that they fit one of these categories and they can get one of these awards so then when I'm passing out the um, certificates like this I can also say and they also were awarded the mad scientist award for having the most creative experiment or approach to collecting data and then they can get that so that everybody feels like they get something special the next thing is for my second and third place, I ordered these science fair medals and they are from crownawards.com. I'll link to that below also. They have a bunch of different faces for the medals and they have a bunch of different ribbons. So you can pick what you want and then you can customize and they have these, um, this is like carved into here. I have challenge A second place. And then on the other one, I have challenge a third place. And these were like, I don't know, not very much, five, six bucks a piece. And then I have a trophy for the winner of Science Fair for this year. And so this is one of the trophies. It's actually pretty heavy. I mean, obviously it's not like full metal. This is plastic up here, but the base is pretty heavy and it's already engraved with whatever you want it to say on here. So I have it say challenge a 2025 winner. And then they have the science fair emblem up here. So useful stuff. It was less than, th it was about 30 bucks to get these medals and this, but that's all customized and that was shipping included. And they shipped it out within like a week. So I got it really quickly. So um, some useful stuff I think might help you out. Okay. So thanks for watching that. And so here you go. Here's all the stuff I had to order. And then I also um, wanted to host a meeting with the judges to explain more because none of them had Challenge A kids. Um, but it was really hard to coordinate our schedules. So it was easier just to make a YouTube video and then they could just sit and watch that. And it would teach them a little bit more about it. And then the week before Science Fair, so for us this was January 20th because our Science Fair was uh, January 27th. So the week before, I put an advertisement in our band, which is this little graphic here. I made it on Canva. And then I collected printed copies of the research papers. So we had three judges, and so I had all my students bring three copies of their research paper the week before. It was due the week before to give them enough time to read over those research papers. And so we had um, one co printed copy for each judge, and then I printed out the copies of the judge's grading rubrics. Um, and you can find, you don't have to photocopy the one in the Challenge 8 guide. There's a really nice view of that on um, in the business section in CC Connected where you can just get the judges form and print off a nice copy of that. And so I put that on the front of each page with the student's name. Actually, I had the students fill out their own names on the judging form. Um, so I didn't have to go through and write all that all those times. And so I handed those to those judges a week before and they had that whole week to look over the papers. And then I, of course, during the research strand, went over with the kids what we were doing the actual day of science fair so that they just didn't have to worry and they knew what the schedule was. And then the actual day for community day for the science fair, um, our challenge students start at 8.30, so we start earlier than foundations. Foundations kiddos start coming to campus at like 9 o'clock, and by 9.30, they're kind of done with their morning assembly stuff, and they're in their rooms. And so at that point, the moms were available to come and be part of our um, science fair stuff. So about 9.30, um, I had a mom volunteer who was helping pull two students at a time out of our strand that we were working on, and those two students would go and do their presentations to the judges. 
So only one student at a time presenting to the judge. But I just kind of had them go um, in pairs so that there was always another student with one student. Um, I just, for safety reasons, I thought that was a good idea. Uh, and it was also not quite as, um, they weren't quite as nervous if they were just presenting with another student there, but they didn't have to present like in front of the whole class or whole community or anything um, really terribly scary like that. So they presented with the judges and then they would come back to um, the room and the strand. And then um, the judges would probably need about five to 10 minutes to kind of go through and do all their marks on their papers and make their judging um, decisions and stuff. And so just do all their stuff on their grading rubric. And then the next pair of students would head out. And so we did that. And it took about an hour and a half uh, to get through all the kids doing their presentations and the judges asking their questions and stuff like that. But at the end of that, the judges were totally done. They had their grading rubrics completed. And then I had a mom volunteer who was awesome and graded or well, didn't grade, but scored all of those forms. And so it made it really quick to figure out who was first, second, and third place. Cause we ended up doing first, second, and third place based on those judges forms. Um, for the students. And then like you heard in that video, I kind of had some extra awards just to recognize the students who weren't first, second, and third, but to know that, you know, their projects were seen and we appreciated everything they put into it and all the hard work that they did. And um, they still had an awesome experience, uh, experiment and needed to be recognized for that. So we had those other um, awards that I mentioned. And um, we had a potluck in our community day. We have um, those quarterly, and it happened to fall on the same day as science fair, which worked out great because a lot of parents were there for potluck. Um, there was food there, so I didn't have to worry about that as a director, trying to budget having snacks and food and all that type of stuff. So I didn't even worry about that. Um, and then towards the end of our lunchtime, we had uh, the judges make some remarks, and they were very impressed, and so they had some very positive remarks. And that was a really good thing for them to do. And then we went through those awards that I mentioned and then uh, pulled the raffle winner for the foundation's kid that won the science kit. And that, uh, yep, that's the end of the presentation. So there you go. That's how we had science fair run in our community. And maybe that'll be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.